And what will you be, handsome? Whatever my queen commands. You'll be my advisor. My protector. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> Welcome to Watch the Thrones. That name means something. The weekly show where we take a look at some of the Easter eggs, important moments, and theories from the newest episode of Game of Thrones. Come with me. On this episode, we'll be taking a look at Season 7, Episode 2, Stormborn. I'm sorry, but please try not to scream. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. Number 3. Sansa Stark, the Queen in the North there must always be a Stark in Winterfell. You're abandoning your people. You're abandoning your home. I'm leaving both in good hands. Whose? Yours. With Jon heading south to meet with Tyrion and Daenerys in Dragonstone, Sansa has now joined the new wave of female rulers in the Seven Kingdoms. With Lady Olenna in control of the Reach, Elaria and Dorne, Danny and Dragonstone, and of course, Cersei on the Iron Throne, this is an unprecedented amount of women in positions of power by Westerosi standards. That being said, Bran is now south of the Wall, and as the oldest male heir of Ned Stark, is the person with the strongest claim on the lordship of Winterfell and the North. How much longer will Sansa hold this seat? And what's Littlefinger's plan now that his love controls the largest province of Westeros? All we know is, unlike Danny, he is perfectly happy being the King of the Ashes, so expect him to stir the pot, despite John's warning. Touch my sister, and I'll kill you myself. <sighs> Number two, the gift. The surest way to a woman's heart is with a gift, a priceless gift. I won't return to King's Landing until I have that for you. After last week's premiere, there was much speculation as to what Euron's gift to Cersei would be. Some suggested it would be Tyrion, others guessed it would be the Dragonbinder, a horn that Euron has in his possession in the books that supposedly allows him to take control of dragons. As it turns out, Euron planned on capturing Elaria Sand, the woman responsible for the death of Cersei's only daughter, Marcella. We can expect Queen Cersei to take fitting revenge on Elaria by killing her daughter the last surviving Sand Snake Tyene, who was also taken alive during Euron's attack. You're not going to die today. You're not going to die for quite a while. As Cersei proved in the season six finale, nothing gives her more pleasure than treating others the way they've treated her. So expect both Elaria and Tyene to suffer, most likely at the hands of the mountain. What Euron has planned for his niece Yara is anyone's guess, but we're pretty sure it won't be pretty. Give your uncle a kiss. Before we get to our top moment, here are some of the best lines from this week's episode. Are you a sheep? No. You're a dragon. Be a dragon. What? You don't like the title? What would you call it then? Possibly something a bit more poetic? We're not poets, Charlie. Why are you standing all the way over there, then? A foreign invasion is underway. Leave him be. Number one, the three-headed dragon. Merikivio Doralaris os Mahagon Kuntas. The prince who was promised will bring the dawn. I'm afraid I'm not a prince. Melisandre loves her prophecies. This episode featured Missande sounding like she's been reading some Song of Ice and Fire discussion boards. I don't. As she correctly pointed out that the whole prince part of the prophecy of the prince that was promised might not be so strict. That noun has no gender in High Valyrian, so the proper translation for that prophecy would be the prince or princess who was promised will bring the dawn. Melisandre notes that the prophecy could apply to both Danny and Jon, but this revelation also hints at the theory of the three-headed dragon. Fans have speculated that each of Danny's dragons will eventually have their own rider. Daenerys has already ridden Drogon, and it seems like Jon, who we learned is really a Targaryen, will eventually join her in the skies. But who could the third rider be? 
Some have suggested Tyrion is actually a Targaryen, given the ambiguous last words of his father. You no son of mine. Obviously, the dragons feel a degree of comfort around him, as Tyrion was able to interact with and even touch them and leave with his life. Not something many non-Targaryens could say. Will Tyrion get his childhood wish of having his own dragon? Only time will tell. It wouldn't even have to be a big dragon, I told him. It could be little, like me. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.